Go! Oh, damn, that was loud. Welcome back to the Immortal Lights for another edition of the Mere Mortals Meanderings. So we're outside once again, out in the park. The beautiful sunny day that we have here in Brisbane is much welcomed. Sometimes you'll see us out here if you're looking at the videos, you check us out and you see the rain. Well, today we probably have the opposite problem where it's so sunny that it's actually quite dark in the video. So perhaps we'll, we'll sort that out in post-editing. But Meanderings is a session for us to converse about anything that we find of interest uh, in our day-to-day -day life that's been happening with falsifiers out in the park, try to bounce ideas of each other uh, and talk about anything that we find uh, of interest. Yep, so for sure. I've got a, a particular topic that's uh, been playing in my mind okay. as of late. And Tell me one. That's the, the hybrid model. The hybrid, hybrid. athlete, okugakes, and, and a few other things. So uh, to, to take listeners back if you've been watching us now for a little while you might have recalled that in one of my annual goals a little while ago i said to not not so much to do an okugake but i ended up doing the kokoda challenge the 96 kilometer Correct. hike with uh, a mate of mine and that was really fun like i really really did enjoy that in, immediately after it i really went like oh i don't want to do like something like this again like i was really sore i was really really uh, almost like damaged by it but I enjoyed it. Looking back at it, I go, oh, that, that was really good. Like, I actually enjoyed the, the challenge, the, okay. the participation of it, the planning for it. That was all good. And then there's other people like, uh, I'll, I'll pull it back. After that particular uh, hike, I then the next year, we're like, okay, I want to I wanna try and do this Okugake thing, which I read in Ross Edgley's uh, book. Um, and I went, okay, I like that sort of concept. I want to try and do that every year. But the following year, I didn't end up doing anything. Like, uh, it, I sort of was trying like, oh, maybe I'll... It'll be the travel to the US and I'll make it like a road trip of some kind, exploration. Mm -hmm. And I never really petered out. Now, it had sort of the essence of preparing for it, the preparation. The, the challenge, I guess, was there. But there wasn't, there wasn't a lot of incentive. And I think, I think it was because it wasn't physical. It wasn't physical in nature, which I think ultimately these sort of okugakis have to be. So. Yeah, well, at least for you. I, I don't see you doing a mentally... Yeah, a mental like, a, like a mental version of that. So perhaps, like for me... One week straight of not, ayahuasca. Yeah, or... You well, know, that probably would be pretty physical. <laughs> probably. Or, or something like, you know, You'd a week of meditation. Zero intestine. You know, a week that. of meditation for me it would be like... No, like yeah, that's, yeah. Not, that's, not, that's not something that's probably yeah. like what front of mind for me. Yeah. So, uh, obviously, listened and, and watched a lot of Ross Edgley stuff. So, Ross Edgley, for those who don't know, he's a guy who swam around um, in Great Britain and just recently he was trying to do the... I don't know exactly what the record of, of it was to beat. So he was like trying to be the, the longest swim ever, like nonstop. Mm -hmm. But uh, his post was like, oh, it's it's unknown length and unknown time. So And, and something wrong happened in that particular challenge. I'm not sure what it was at this current time. So uh, that that's sort of an example of like someone doing a pretty big thing. He also does things like uh, running a marathon while pulling a car. So pretty like insane feats. And I, that, that's the sort of stuff that makes me go... It sounds insane, folks, and I think the car, and we were talking about this a little bit earlier, is like, no, that doesn't sound fun. But to me, that's like, that sounds fun. Like, that sounds that sounds like a challenge, and it kind of reminded me of the Okugake. And now I'd like just, to try it for 20 minutes. Yeah. And then never and again. And then never again. <laughs> now, there's another guy, and I can't really uh, remember his name right now, so that's, that's fine. I can look it up later. But he's doing he's doing similar things to, to Ross. So, he's doing... Like the Antarctic guy? No, 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 no. Not the Antarctic guy. So, this guy, I think it's Justin. I think his name is Justin. So, he's a Scottish guy. Scottish guy. Okay. So... He's done a recent thing where he it was the one that uh, did a 600 kilogram powerlifting total, and uh, did a like a massive, um, like brutal triathlon or something like that it was called. Uh, but he also does things like that powerlifting total and a sub six hour, six, 60 kilometer run, something like that. So and I, I kind of went that that sounds cool. That entices me. That that was like it's a it's a nice balance between you know, the heavy stuff or like the lifting that I really enjoy with the challenge that might come with such a, such a run. Now, I went, realistically, am I a runner? Like, am I, am I going to be someone who's going to be like, oh, I'm going to run. And you've talked to, I forget what his name, what was that guy's name that you talked to a long time ago here on the podcast that did running, like long distance running? Uh, Tanya. No, 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 sorry, not Tanya. Um, he was like a big guy, like a really, really big oh, guy. Oh, yeah, um, um, James, James. Penny. James, James. So, you know, I, I don't think I can, I can see myself as being like a really long distance runner like that. No, that's, that's kind of like, I already kind of know that that's probably won't work. But something along the lines of uh, like different modalities, so it's a bit more more fun, maybe like a sprint triathlon or something like that, and then partnering it up with some lifting. And I went, okay, that's that, that's kind of where my orientation might be with Okugakis if I was to plan them again in the future, where at the moment, uh, my, my monthly goals and annual goals for fitness looking more like, oh, I want to get 
X amount body weight of for squat and X amount of body weight for deadlift and, and whatnot. Mm. And I think as I continue moving forward, almost in a to make it funner, I'll probably start building in things where it'll be it'll capture some of that. So it might be like, okay, I want to try and achieve you know in a day do a sprint triathlon and this particular amount of lifting and whatnot. And that's more just as a almost like a little guide or like a chalk in the sand of being like, okay, that's what I want to be able to do or attempt to try and do at that time and, and feel like I'm just hitting a lot of different modalities. Not everything. Again, I'm not being like, oh, I want to be the really, really great at everything. Nah, that's still quite specific. And he, so the, in this particular podcast, this guy was talking about, they were kind of going back and forth and I was going to ask you this question because I, I don't know where I landed with it, which was he, he kind of called himself a, a hybrid athlete. So he actually originally came from CrossFit and th- there's something in CrossFit about like, you know, you should be able to do X amount of, lifts plus a sort of run to be considered like a particular level so that's what started him on the path of doing this sort of events and, and the like but he was saying how, how he was very much a hybrid athlete so he specifically trains um very a wide amount of things so he's doing a lot of powerlifting, and then he'll do a lot of functional stuff with crossfit and then he'll go and do like really long distance run and yes it takes a long time but he was like i'm very hybrid i do a lot of stuff and the guy who he was being interviewed by some like sports doctor was like oh no i actually don't think that you're like being hybrid or being spreading yourself thing you're actually very specifically training to do those aspects of like when it's a 60 kilometer run well you're very specifically training to do that distance run not at like the fastest speed but just not super fast and not super long distance it's just training specifically for that Mm. do you think that if i was to say to you okay i i'm gonna attempt to get one x bodyweight bands two x bodyweight squat three x bodyweight deadlift and run a marathon on one day does that sound like okay you spread like that that's, that sounds like a really big spread like you're spreading yourself and doing a lot of things or does it sound like to you like it'd be like oh no it's a very specific kind of training so i don't know where where i landed on that yeah i'd, I'd probably lean more towards specific it, it, it now if, if you would if you said i want to build myself into a position where i could do something like that or i could do something like as swim for you know doggy paddle straight for four hours and then speed walk 80 kilometers or something like that mm. and and you were yeah because there's like a, a specific thing like you just mentioned mm. that one i would say no you're trying to do something but if you were just in general getting your body prepped for things like that then i would say okay that's that's more of a, a hybrid thing yeah yeah so I don't know, and again i guess this is just me like meandering on it because I don't, I don't know exactly where i've landed on this on this thought it's similarly reading um david goggins kind of hurt me book there's there's a, me. there's a lot of you're gonna go to his thing in brisbane here no i actually looked into it and i was like nah that, that wouldn't be for me. I like the, the cost of it as well like it was quite expensive and i and i went How much do, I, do i really want to go uh i think it was like in the hundreds I, I don't know exactly but it was it wasn't it wasn't two figures i know it's three figures so yeah. that, oh, i don't know but i was like oh, no, i don't, I don't want to check that out um but in in reading that there was a, a lot of conversation about uh you know doing it not for the sake of the win or for even like doing it for yes i want to be doing the 80 kilometer run or i want to be doing xyz but more of the in the challenge and in the callousing of your mind there is a good thing to be found in that almost like in in, in itself just doing a particular challenge or doing like for for me say the kokoda challenge you know did it did it improve my hiking skills did i become much much well versed in in walking and hiking and, and running and fitter no it probably like took me back to be honest like, say, it yeah, ranked my feet. You improved. i haven't like <laughs> gone on a hike since right i've got a lot of stuff i haven't gone on a hike since but in some part the bit that it probably I did take away was the the perseverance of actually going like okay well i've got no sleep for 30 hours well at that point it was probably like 40 hours of no sleep and continuing to just do something which is not incredibly intensive but it's just you don't want to it's like it's one of those where you don't want to continue yeah, but you continue so it's kind of like the callousing of the mind the, the perseverance of it which which i d- i do find quite pleasurable in in some ways like i in, in thinking about it right now that makes me like excited like oh i remember like not sleeping for like ages and having to walk down this path <laughs> that's like sounds good like I'm, I'm kind of excited about that in a weird way so and i get it me more less i am weird in that particular way i don't think that I, I that's not you don't have to share that particular trait of wanting to push that sort of way but i think that for me there's something in that that i really enjoy it's probably the the aspect of that perseverance slash resilience that i probably don't find in like a day-to-day life that i enjoy doing so i think okugaku is going to make it back into my annual goal somehow oh, okay. 
but I'll have to just. But it wasn't in this one. It wasn't this year. It wasn't. Yeah. I definitely took it out away from this year, and I'm happy not doing. Perhaps like it might come about without it being there. So similar with the Kokoda challenge, I didn't have an annual goal where I want to do yeah, that. Correct. Yeah, correct. Just kind of popped up, and then I went, ah, oh, okay, I'll kind of do it. So uh, again, I did that with Menchil, and Menchil's invited me to go do the uh, Spartan race that he's doing in a couple of months. No, it's a short one, and I'm like. I'll like, oh, be kind of cool, but maybe I'll be like, oh, cool, I'll, I'll do that. That, that. that might be a little bit of fun. And in the end of that, I might be like, oh, maybe it's that. Maybe it's something like that equivalent or something similar where I go, okay, maybe, maybe I want to do that. Maybe I want to do this. Have you looked at doing any international versions of these things? So in uh, Spain, there's the, I think it's called the Pilgrim's Trail. And yes. basically, and you know, in um, Peru, there's the Inca Trail. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing there's basically every continent and every country yeah they must have trails like that yeah no. trail or trial tribulation yeah maybe i should look into that actually because while i've well i know of them i haven't particularly looked at them as being like oh that that could be like a, a like that sort of event to do i've always just been looking at the either self-imposed oh i'm going to do this for the particular lifting or it's a race or something like that but mm. in saying that which is a good point it's not like I want to do a race. Like, and, and all of this I'm talking about, it's not like you're, you're not hearing me say, oh, I want to do this so I can be the best bencher in Australia or I can be the best deadlifter in Australia. It's like, no, no, no. Like that, that, that almost just doesn't... Like that, for sure, it doesn't matter at all now. It's more just the, the doing of the hard stuff I, I find fun. Um, and again, in like David Gogan's book, he, he seems to be more of the mindset of like... He doesn't even like to do running. And like, I mean, he, he does so much running, he kind of have to like... You, you kind of have to find some... Pa- some enjoyment out of it at that point if you're doing it that much but um just for just for the sake of doing it because you know that's good for you in other respects and just kind of kind of works so like in everyday life it doesn't make it as hard when bad things or hard things come up so i was like okay i do like that concept as well so anyways toying, toying about it with my mind so what it, what it means i don't know i don't know what exactly it means but yes if you see me just randomly doing a massive swim event or like a triathlon or something like that then you'll be then you can be like okay yeah. okay that makes sense so like you know this year i do like in the annual goals is i'm gonna swim two k's like non-stop so you know that's not that's i think that one k swim to two k swim okay that's a little bit of a difference that's that's getting to a little bit because i think the triathlon swimming distance is two and a half kilometers so like um i'd be almost at the point of being like okay well i could probably just do a triathlon swim at this point now i hate bicycle riding so i'm like oh, i hate to do bicycle riding but you can do things i know that a friend of mine did uh, triathlon where you each just do a particular section like someone does the bike someone does the swim someone does the run mm-hmm. so you know I might I might uh, decide to go down the path does, does that in any of this that I'm saying how does that compare to you with handstands or the aspects of handstands stuff like that because is it too foreign is it too foreign a concept to apply to the the likes of the gymnastic movements the handstands and the like yeah I, th- I think you're limited with what you can do with a handstand. I mean, you know, even the... Well, I mean, my example would be like, you know, is there such a thing... Have you heard of anybody in, in the handstand community that yeah, pe- is... Well, no, of like, oh, I'm going to I'm gonna do, uh, you know, hold a handstand for as long as possible. I'm going to try and do that like 10 times. I'm going to do that for yeah, 100 yeah. days. There's, there's people who do challenges like, uh, I want to be able to walk um, the equivalent of 10 kilometers on my hands in a single day. And now, obviously, you can't do that in one go, but they will just either go in a gym or um, and and just go back and forth and you know handstand walk there, handstand walk there, and just do sets and sets and sets. So there are people who who do that, and I'm sure there are equivalent things. But it's and you you know I'm sure there's people who are like I want to have done the equivalent of an hour of my hands in a day, and mm-hmm. that would probably take you I don't know four or five hours. I'm guessing to to be able to get that long a hold time up mm. um maybe a little bit shorter i'm not sure I yeah was, that, i was trying to think. just quickly you although i can't really find it um like what's the fastest like marathon but like handstand walking oh that, that I, i'm pretty sure we talked about that in the yeah, uh, yeah, yeah like <coughs> but all i can really find right now is like yeah that, someone's that, got no legs hard to, hard someone's to. got no legs, no legs doing a marathon so <laughs> uh, okay yeah yeah, yeah. I, I get that yep. yeah yeah uh, but no, but that, and that doesn't interest you. Like, do, it, do, do, it doesn't interest me, interest and I, I don't think the type of people you'll find in those communities, I don't think it'll interest them either. Mm. What I've, what I've kind of noticed is the, mm, the handstand people that, like we were saying, free spirited. Mm. We were talking about this last night with some friends, and you know, we're trying to describe the little handstand retreat I went away on, yep. and the people who were with me, mm. and it's 
and and uh, I think someone made the comment was like, wait, you did that on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? Like, mm. don't any of you have jobs? <laughs> it was like, well, you know, yes, but not mm. they're not the standard. Yeah, you know, they're yeah. PTs, they're they're um, support care workers, they're people who like um, Apple Store employees. Like they they have flexibility mm. in their lives, um, and that that kind of uh, I don't know what you call it, like a striving or that challenge, that that mm. um, co- probably competitiveness is is slightly lacking. Although you know, in gymnastics, that you you still yeah, do find that. it, yeah. Um, but but it, I don't I don't think it appeals to that that community in, in yeah, general or and, the people that, that are attracted to handstanding. Or, yeah, and I guess that's what I'm not. Movement. I'm um, not like in in talking about all this, like especially that like that hybrid thought of like I definitely want to keep on doing heavy lifting of, of some kind. And so, you know, in my mind, I've always already been doing things where it's like to do with body weight totals with all of the lifts. So it's, you know, normal bench squat, deadlift and cleans and um, snatches and overhead press. So it'd be, but I can imagine myself building up some some random concoction of everything just as a bit of fun to do myself. But I wonder the type of people who I would encounter who are doing similar things. So like a Ross Edgley or a few of these other guys, are they doing it for the pursuit of competition? Are they doing it for the pursuit of just like it's fun and they similarly see it and, and of like just a challenge just seems like a bit of fun? It does it become a, a view of you know I'm doing it for for the getting people to see me type of deal? I think, you know? I think that 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 that's what comes to mind for me. Good, because a the bit. example here is like say Ross, uh, this other guy okay, I keep forgetting his name. So they they're um, sponsored by um, not the UN by Red Bull or something. No, like no, that. no, not Red Bull. Uh, it's a UK, the UK, uh, Gymshark, Gymshark. I'm pretty sure. Okay. Um, and a few other companies, right? So they obviously get supported, and and that's how they're able to do this and get paid for that. But I kind of it kind of makes me think, um, you know, if it wasn't for all of that, you know, if you, if you took away took away all that, would you still yeah. okay. would you still be doing it? You know, if it was like, you know, yeah. I see a lot of Instagram posts this, of like, this here's, is a fun a topic. here's a challenge that I did. This is the thing that I did. Would you still do it if that wasn't the case? Because the example that, the only real example that I've seen of this, well, that I know of is say like uh, Goggins because he does do 100 mile races, 240 mile races. And he's not, he's not posting about it. He's not talking about it. In fact, the, I think the last time I listened to a podcast of his with Joe Rogan, you know, he was talking about how he want just to do more hard things so he became a um, one of those guys like flies into fires and digs holes and stuff like that for hours and it's not like he's talking about it or doing videos about it he just <laughs> for whatever reason digging holes oh <laughs> yeah it was like uh, he basically like the way he was explaining it uh, like again I'm gonna have to believe what he's saying yeah. I don't know if it's all 100% truth so who knows but he was saying that he he basically after like runs and stuff like that because he had to have heart surgery because he had a heart hole for like almost his life he he googled like okay what's well, just the, the hardest job i can go do just to continue doing hard stuff and he found that you can it's called like i can't remember what it's like but it's basically like you go out to where fires are going to be and you dig holes like trenches holes um in forest areas so that you can set up like backfire like set up now i don't know exactly the details but apparently it was like just like a ridiculously hard job now okay. he's not talking about it to people he's not p- posting videos about it but he's just doing it because it's a hard thing and it seems to be like a I'm going to say it, he's probably sadistic in many ways to himself, but there's, I think that's a very extreme human being. And mm. so like, I'm not saying to be that, that sort of level extreme, but there is a good part in that, that he's like, he's not doing it to show up. Like he's not doing it for sure to like tell people about it as opposed to some who do put together the videos, the, the thing to be like, oh, this is what I'm doing. And even in that, I kind of, I'm floating between the two because with Sacred Creator Challenge, I didn't post any videos, I didn't do anything, I didn't talk it up. I posted it, I think I talked about it here in the podcast more as like, it was fun, it was interesting, this is what happened. Yeah. But never in like, a, oh, look at me, this is what I did. And so similarly, I think if I was to do, let's just say a triathlon and some sort of lifting combined in like one day, I wouldn't, it wouldn't be, like I wouldn't want to be the person that goes, oh, I did this and like, you know, it's a challenge and no one's ever done this before or whatever. I think I, I, I would try to, and I hope, would focus more on the long lines of, holy shit, like this was the tough moment. Like this was really sucky. I learned this, I learned that, more of that aspect as opposed to anything else. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I, I, I have to see when I, when I get to that point as well. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was just thinking of, if you were to do a challenge, would you prefer it to have a... 
a group dynamic to it as well. So the things I was listing mm. are, you know, climbing Mount Everest and doing the the Pilgrim Trail or whatever. Mm. There, there is a very group centered thing to it. Um, and how how would that change the dynamic of would would you want to do it in a in a group type setting with other people or would yeah, it want to be a question. real individual thing? Mm, I kind of uh, and, and, and default s- thinking a bit of both. I think a bit of both. I, I do enjoy like I did enjoy doing a code challenge uh, with people. Yeah, okay, I think that was there's, good. There's the this is the hybrid model right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. hybrid both. <laughs> there, there was a bit of I want it all then. Yeah. <laughs> uh, doing the the code in a group, I I did enjoy that. Like that was really good fun, and it it is easier I think to do it with a group than not do it a group. That's for sure. But I think in other aspects, it would be fun to do it also on my own. Like that, that also wouldn't, it wouldn't uh, take me away. Wouldn't, uh, yeah, but probably both. We also have a magpie here sneaking up on us behind us nice. in, a, in a very interesting way. Nice. Um, yeah, anyways, that's 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 my thoughts on, on the fitness at the moment. Mm. Yeah, it got me thinking about when I was doing the marathon. And so even though I, I said it and probably most people would assume, oh, you're going to run a marathon in a race with other people. Yep. I, no. that that was you know i i contemplated the idea but it was one of those ones where it was like it, it was probably never going to happen mm. I, was, I was never going to i i wasn't willing to mm, budge on my dislike of exercising in the morning <laughs> for example true yep it would have to be a marathon that starts at you know 1 p.m in the afternoon and then uh, like, you don't a, you don't find a, that you don't find in that. a relative yeah in a relatively like fun kind of place you know easy access to get to that mm. sort of thing like, it, it was never going to happen um and then it's like oh okay but maybe you could maybe you'd find other people who are also training like an actual mm. training group i went to a couple here in brisbane yep. for a for a, a laugh um and yeah there was there's was people who are actual runners and pretty decent runners um, but even then, it was there was never any intention of doing anything with them, mm. and so yeah, of course, I take it to like a psychotic level and just run around an <laughs> AFL field as many times as I can until my legs give way. And yeah, that that episode is uh, I can't even remember when yeah, that was. I, um, I remember talking about that. Even talking about this right now, though, it's it's, been, it's making me it's making me a little bit excited. Like I, I remember when we were doing that sort of stuff, and looking back at it now, and man, I really <laughs> it was. I remember the running that we were doing then it was sucky but there was an aspect of it which was quite fun like there was there was that aspect of like oh we're going to do it this time and so i think the learning now now that I've, i'm like doing a bit more running now is that remove the the timing aspect altogether of it so you know then for those who might not have listened to us we were talking about trying to do a marathon sub four hours slow. yeah a slow, slow. <laughs> a slow marathon of sub four hours you know uh but we like you, you did the half marathon and sub um, two hours that, one, one, a, 147 and I was and keeping on going so I could have I could have done that I could have shaped off a couple of minutes yeah so you know there's there's aspects of that where it's like it was like oh we're gonna do it for these times I think now it's I think the enjoyment would be more of just the challenge of just doing it uh, in terms of like okay, just, just, just do the half marathon just do a marathon just do X just do Y as opposed to being dialed into well it's gonna be at this time or it's gonna be like this place you're gonna come top 10 I think that that for the most part, and I, I don't know if I've, if I want to say that I've I've been competitive before and now I'm not competitive that way. I, I kind of tend to go, maybe I haven't ever been that competitive at all. Maybe I think that I've been competitive, but I, maybe I haven't. Like I just, mm. I do enjoy just the aspect of doing stuff, not for the sake of, of fun. So, you know, examples here is uh, we, we've played like, tennis matches uh, with friends that have gone like for ages, like a, like a three hours like, sort of thing, for yeah. a long time. And I didn't, the enjoyment didn't come like I remember, the enjoyment didn't come from Actually who winning. won or the point and stuff like It came from just being out there for a real long time and yeah, it being like yeah. just so ridiculously long that it just became like more and more fun. And so that for me, I was like, I enjoyed that. Like that was such good fun. And I go, okay, Ch- challenge. Like don't get me wrong. That was a freaking hard thing to do, but challenge and fun. So I was like, okay, more, more of that. So I, 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 again, I don't know where I'm summarizing with this, but it's, I, I, it's I something in the thought of, so when I was doing that, running around the AFL field. Mm. So AFL field for those who are non-Australians, uh, what's the dimensions of it? It's like an a, a ellipse. I think it's 160 meters long, I think. So it's like a, so it's so an oval, like so it's an oval point, shape. Yeah. So what's so from like end to end, I think it's 160, maybe it's less, maybe 130. And, and I think it's 80 like meters wide. 80 wide, yeah. And yeah. so the uh, going around big, the whole oval, oval would be, 
I don't know. Whatever the hell the, the uh, I'm pretty sure a, two laps was just shy of 1K. There you I'm go. Pretty sure. okay. or, or was it either just over or just shy? So right, it's, okay. yeah. So about 500 odd meters yeah, to go around. Yeah. And uh, I did just a local one here, you know, 1 p.m. on a random day. Do you remember what day it was? Because you, you came down. Not exactly, but I know that I was at work. It was a working day. So yeah, yeah, it was, week, it was yeah. a weekday. And, and, you know, I chose that day because no one would be really using the field. Mm. And I just remember at one point, I was probably, yeah, three hours in or something. And this kid was like, he's just running still. <laughs> like, that's the kind of shit I froth on. Yeah. Blowing, blowing like some random's mind who happens to come across me. Like that, that I, I find that so much more fun than uh, that. And not, not even like, if, if that didn't happen, that's fine as well. But. Th there, that, is a, that there is aspect aspects of that, I, yeah. I, there is aspects I, I, of that. I find funny. Rather than competing in the marathon, coming, you know, maybe a good place, but not not winning for sure and, and not um Yeah, I don't know. I, I like I like the, the story of me being yeah. a weirdo and just running around an AFL field more than competing in a marathon. Yeah, I, I I kinda take a little bit of that as well. Like an example for me in so it's different, but I so say for you it would be definitely hand sense than that. But I I had the gym the other day and I've I've done that a couple of times where I'll basically I'll superset. So my superset would be like I'll be doing hamstring curls or leg extensions or like heavy squats. Like heavy, heavy squats. And then I'll superset that with handstand walks. I like a normal gym. Now that's probably commonplace in like a CrossFit place or similar. But I, uh, I, I, I froth on that because you'll just see people kind of like watching you do a heavy squat or something, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and then just go straight into some sort of handstand walks and stuff, and just be like, "What's going on?" Like uh, this, these are these are two very like pole opposite things that you're trying to like you're doing right now. But I, like I do enjoy that. I do find that, which I think is why I would find it really enjoyable to do this thing where people go like oh you know if you're a heavy lifter or whatever you've got to look a certain sh you've got to be like a certain shape and you've got to be a particular build and you've got to very very, very yeah, focused yeah, on like that and you do if you want to be the absolute best and don't get me wrong but for fun like you can become really really strong and also do this other stuff and i think it's just it's in the fun of being like wait what like what's going on like this is not what i, I would expect to be happening um so there's, yeah. there's, there's a little breaking there, the though. expectations um brendan there was this guy called um andre bondarenko if you've never seen mm -hmm. him um, I'll, I'll, I'll send you some clips of him. Andre. Incredible. Uh, Cirque, Cirque du Soleil performer. Mm -hmm. And as far as handstands go, yeah, e even him, I would say, like makes Miguel look... Yeah, really? Not, 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 like he, this guy is just so, so good. Okay. Um, and he came to Brisbane at some point, mm -hmm. like Australia, maybe he was doing a tour and he was basically just doing workshops. And so I think yeah. he was doing workshops in you know, Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne, Adelaide, some, something like that. Mm. Uh, and Brendan was going to one and it was on a on the weekend and on the Friday he was driving through Queen Street Mall like the the main Brisbane mm. um, center area and uh, he was stopped at a traffic light and was like looked out the window and saw him just in plain clothes yeah. and he was with his work colleague and was like <laughs> shaking and being like you see that guy right there that is the best hand like that is one of the best handstanders you will ever see yeah. and it's just like a random dude walking around like yeah. he, he he's, <laughs> he's he's uh if he had clothes on unless it was like tight fitting mm. you know you, you wouldn't you wouldn't know you're yeah just yeah mistaken for who are another person yeah, yeah exactly like I'm, I'm i'm going for the um uh what was the boy band uh like back sync uh, back street boys back street back sync back street boys you were mixing in sync i'll start um yeah, you know, like yeah. i'm doing my white shirt here <laughs> Uh, start flowing in the wind but yeah you, you know unless he was wearing like really tight fitting stuff you yeah you wouldn't you wouldn't think you, twice you, about you wouldn't anything. look at his body and even even in then you'd be like yeah maybe like he's got some muscle but you know your body is probably more physically imposing or impressive yeah yeah like you, but again you wouldn't imagine them to be like Oh, he's one of the best hand hands yeah, in the world. Just, just like absolute crazy motherfucker, yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, anyways, that's that's my yeah. my, my ranting and no, talking about cool. that. That was, that was a fun um, topic. It actually kind of leads me on to one thing, which was, uh, I have a propensity for getting trapped in routine. This is probably the the downside of what people would see as a positive for me, yeah. which is the. The compliments I tend to get are like, "Wow, you're you're very disciplined," that mm. sort of thing. Which, yeah, I I see that. And um, but the the downside of this, when when I take it too far, yeah. is is I definitely get trapped in a routine and don't um, 
move out of it like i get very comfortable in what maybe many people would think is uh like hard work but for me it's like no all right do you know one hour german now moving on to this thing mm. now move on to this thing and it this is because well consistency really produces results so uh, funnily enough, the other day I had my first dream where I was speaking German in it. Oh, so this is damn. usually kind of like a, a milestone or a little thing which indicates like, oh, okay, I'm on the right path. Yeah. So I remember I was in the dream and I was, I was speaking in German. And um, as I woke up, I kind of recalled what I was saying. I was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure that was coherent. And uh. th- I'm pretty sure that made mostly sense. Mm. Now, funnily enough, this also happened on this, this exact same day where I went to the park and there's um, two two Mexicans there who I, mm. I chat with a lot, and I, it, that was also the day where I just went, my Spanish is so bad. Like, I'm, oh, I'm, really? I'm really now noticing it is degrading for sure. Like it's damn I, okay. I can't just switch it on, kind of like I used to a little bit. Mm. Uh, there was just that one. I mean, look, could have been a one-off day, but yeah. it, it was a kind of wake-up call, being like, whoa, you're. You're actually losing it now. Instead, oh. of, instead of it's kind of just staying consistent. Maybe was you, it in was it in the in the actual so words like, that you were saying or yeah, in the listening? Yeah, um, no, just just formation of words, just the this like sentence structure. Mm. Um, I, I we were talking about. Um, I was doing dragon squats. Um, how do you say dragon in, in Spanish? Dragon. Huh? Dragon. Dragon. Okay. Dragon. So I think I would have known that at some point. Mm. Forgot how to say that. And then we were talking about like muscles and things like that and I, I really wanted to say like your, your upper body mm. and i know that's like cuerpo superior something like that i know that i've used yep. that so many times before and it just didn't come out i was just yeah, okay. uh, ah, ah. so uh yeah and uh, this, this is all getting to the point of um what i what i've noticed uh, recently with mm. the enforced laptop issues <laughs> yeah um i've purposely put that in the second half because we've been i bitched about it not enough on the front loading yeah, of it yeah, last week, line, yeah. was uh there was some things which just if you put the upfront effort you get you get a good reward from it mm. and so in this case it's the uh like self-hosting on castapod for example mm. i've been delaying and delaying upgrading it because i knew it would be a pain in the ass i didn't i knew it would suck yep and i also had all these transcripts from Mm. dreb scott delayed doing it because i didn't want to upload all these things and then still have this problem of like not updating the actual thing and then like what would happen if i you know uh screwed that up and then it's like oh it's wasted effort well i was forced to do it because (laughs) I locked myself out of my own um, podcast. And then, um, yeah, I'll, I'll talk more about wh- why, how I got locked out yeah. and how it was even a bigger issue than it, than it <laughs> needed to be. And so I had to basically like uh, create a new DigitalOcean mm. server, get a new um, domain oh, name. damn. You had to yeah, get the whole I, I, had to, I had to literally upload every single episode to, oh. to um, get it back. Now, this was a pain in the ass, but it was also surprisingly easy like they've updated it i didn't have to use ssh logins and okay. and things like this anymore it was it was so simple to get back to a point where i was comfortable with and mm. then it was just the manual uploading of things yep and i went man you've you, you can't you've been screwing yourself current because mm. this this wasn't that hard mm. you, you made it out as a big deal in your mind and you know uncertainty that's going to be so hard and it's going to take away from uh, all the other stuff, which yep. is true. I have had to drop my German practice this last uh, week or two. Yep. Literally because I had to deal with all of these problems and, mm. you know, spending six hours getting my computer <laughs> yeah. settings back and and all that sort of shit. Uh, but it did just make me go like, um, there are times when I get too stuck in my routine and this is where I need, I think other people to help me out mm. so even though I, I generally like doing shit on my own this is where having someone like you go uh that value for value presentation at a crypto event mm. i th- just just book it for me will you yeah. <laughs> can you just do that so that it's it's just like a data set like give me at set, least a yeah, week yeah, yeah. out but you know normally that sort of thing i'd be like 
uh, I want to create a presentation. Then I probably want a, a good month or two of like practicing it on my own because yeah. I haven't done presentations before. I think that is a is a detriment. I th I think mm. uh, I need impetus outside impetus to to spur me to new things because yeah. I, I just really struggle with it sometimes. Mm. Um, struggle. In, I can put all the goal setting I want, but sometimes it just uh, I need to be forced to, by to external circumstances. Yeah, and I think we all do. I think in, in that doesn't. Um, <laughs> I don't think that misses anybody. Humanity in general, in terms no, of no, no. I, th I think there's quite a few like... people who are so kind of spontaneous, so like they 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 lack the discipline, but they make up for it by just spontaneously just doing straight things, up yeah. experimentation. Ex experimentation. That's the thing I I, I, yeah, I struggle true. with probably. Yep. I, yeah. I don't I don't do enough of it. Yeah, and I think this is good. And uh, this reminds me of when I was putting together the the sounding board. Uh, many months ago and I guess one of the principal ideas as to why I wanted that was for this exact reason because some were on the spectrum of from a discipline to spontaneity to the idea of something you know I sit in a particular place in that range and yes I will be able to deviate myself a little bit but that's where you kind of have a sounding board or you have people that kind of help you out and go oh okay actually say someone who's super disciplined might be able to say oh actually this is uh you probably should be a little bit more focused on this and this, this, this. Someone more spontaneous might be like, oh, actually, no, if you look at that. So then you get more ideas. And you're right. So like in your example for the you know, the presentation, it's like it, it probably would help if we were just like, nope, talk up to Lucas and Bitcoin guys and be like, cool, that's the day we're doing it. Awesome. Do it with enough leeway time. Awesome. Like, it's like it's set. Mm. So you have to go and do it. Not that, oh, okay, I want to try and perfect things and do other things while trying to do that because you, you'll you eventually either not do it yeah or... i don't think i'm a perfectionist but i i think i there's another word which i, I don't know top of mind which which describes me it's definitely not perfectionism no. but it's, it's spending too long on something when um when i when it's it's necessary to actually push the boundaries a bit more yeah yeah i don't know what word we use for that but yeah me more likes if you have a if you have a word for that please <laughs> please have yeah mr Graham in. yeah um I've got some other stuff. So okay. this is the related to the, the laptop issues okay, and the, and yeah, the problem. Yeah. So if you, yeah, it's not so much moaning this time. It's mm. more observations of some things. So okay. remember how I was telling you about the the problem with transcripts, and I was saying with certainty it's going to mispronounce my name and, and put <laughs> yeah, it wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It did. Ready, it did. ready for this it shit. Did. So I, I went through all of the ones that Dreb provided uh, and, yeah. and just just try to clean them up a little bit, mm. but only only kind of like the main stuff yep so here is how Chiron gets translated <laughs> translated Kara Karen Darren current Chiron Karan Curran Kara with a C Kira currently Ka am Kyra Karen <laughs> Chiron carrying uh, Kira uh, Chiron and close, close. Uh, there was other one which was like car and I think car so and, I'm damn. not sure how many that's like 10 to 12 10 to 15 right there um, I like the currently that's good currently yeah currently yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. I thought I thought some of these were like oh yeah you know what that's a that's not too bad that's, yeah. not, that's not bad but no current did, did it ever come out as current I don't know no not, no, once. not, not once. once not wow. once did it come out that's my actual <laughs> name which is was pretty hilarious now it it also stuffed up a lot of other things so boostergram mm. uh, was pretty constantly put as booster graham so there's like ah, this yeah, guy okay. graham yeah. the booster graham <laughs> and uh, mere mortals as well that no nah, it didn't really yeah it was it was mere uh, sometimes it would get it maybe mm. like a third of the time but mm. the other times it would be uh mere models models mere models mere models um that mm. one was um or or mean i think it was like mean something as well <laughs> So, yeah, I, um, I was, it was good, but I was also surprised by how much it sucked on some mm. particular words. Now, look, Boostergram isn't in the English lexicon. Yeah. It's not a dictionary, so I don't expect that Look, one, and but... I would say Kyron is not a no, Kyron super, as well. no, no. like, known name either. No, that's, that's uh, I 100% understand those two. But things like mere mortals, yeah. I don't know, maybe it's because we, we just say it off the tongue me me mortals you know yeah. we're aussies so it's not particularly designed for us and maybe mm. if you ha have a user decent service you can tweak the settings a little how bit how bad was it if you did no editing like no uh, editing uh, at uh, all it was 100 percent. you know like 90 98 like it was legible like it was quite legible yeah, 100%. Yeah, okay. that was just there was just certain names and it was mostly names 
of people and mm. of and like like particular terms that might not yeah, be yeah okay. yeah like you you would have been like sorry 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 uh, booster Graham and being like oh okay booster Graham yeah type of deal okay. yeah mm. uh, value for value you know sometimes that would get mispronounced or, or mm. put 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 down wrong as well so yeah mm. it was a mm, I wasn't as I mean look it's amazing that there's something that exists that can just translate audio to text like that mm. like what the fuck if you'd said that even i don't know 20 years ago that probably would have been i don't know was was transcripts around then maybe who knows it would have been but yeah it's still like you're not not the ease ease of use yeah Although i've also had similar there's a software or company whatever otter.ai which promised to so i remember trying to build this when i was working uh, at a company five six years ago so Otter ai allows you to create well, you can make it take notes for you. It's supposed to be like take notes in a meeting. And I was trying to... Now, I, I put my foot into this car. I, I said, like, without much technical know-how here, I was like, oh, this should be pretty easy. And the <laughs> what I was trying to do was so that you could be in a meeting talking with other people. And the problem was uh, note-taking. Like, you just got all this note-taking in, like, a meeting. And you have to get, like, a junior to come in to do that. So the thought was, okay... We'll use this AI, which is basically transcripting what people are talking about, but it will also take actions. So you might be like, oh, Otter, take this action, say something, and then it'll kind of capture that as an action specifically. Yeah. Now, that was actually much harder to do, <laughs> at least for, for myself to do it now. Was it doable? Yes, but it required me to set up a fi Google Firebase database, create like a, an intent for the AI to pick up what you're saying, to translate. The auto AI system is early. Like it's good, as you say, but it's not picking up everything. So if I was mm. to just be talking like this and then say, oh, uh, auto, take action. Yeah, we're going to do this and then continue talking. It wouldn't really know when to pass, where that stopped, where it began and it missed things. And if you didn't get like, take this action, then it would just continue. So you'd like mess it up. So there was a lot of, that that i was like oh man this is yes it's amazing and yes i can see like the little stuff you can do but still i was like all right observing it being like oh, there's still so much challenges here that in the end we just reverted back to having a person take notes because it was just not not there not quite there yet yeah so i was like man fair. yeah 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 pretty much my experience is it's just just not 100 percent. yeah there. like it's great but it's just not there like to the absolute perfect perfect that you'd expect a human to translate yeah for sure uh, in terms of the value for value side, so I've finished up the, the last episode of, yep. of season two. A couple of things from that. One, when we miss when we miss episodes, it's noticeable that there's a lack of boostergrams coming in. Oh, like really? The, the support, okay. It's not like people go back and listen to an old episode, an old episode. And, and do and it. And it, boostergram through. Which, yeah. which uh, is what to be expected from from mm. the model it's you're judged on your latest effort and yep. if your latest effort is missing a week well you should get nothing and mm. and that that um that makes sense to me and i think that mm. that's a, a, a kind of like a healthy sign in a way yeah. um uh, or maybe not a healthy sign it's just it is a sign that's that's what mm. what to be expected so consistency of course is is, is mm. super critical and that's what you'll hear most of like the really big podcasters say yep. so that's that's the key ingredient although i still want to create podcasts and content that is a little bit more everlasting like i, I do think that you know we've talked about say the kokoda challenge one when we i did that or when we, we talked about your retreat or when we talked about you doing the half marathon and marathon and the experiences those are standalone podcasts and things you could go back to as a listener and go listen to it again and absolutely take away all of the learnings and the stuff for it so i think there's, there's a part in the fact that we're just not at the particular size that people are going to do that. Like we, we, we're not, we don't have right now. We probably have people listening to random episodes every now and again, but we don't, we don't have the reach right now where someone's like, "Oh, they talked about it right now. I'm going to go find that episode." Uh, like maybe, maybe there's a, one or two people, but there's not a ton of people. And of those people, I don't think those people are specifically going and using the Valley for Valley model right now. It's more of a just finding that episode, listening to it somewhere like a Spotify or Apple or wherever, and cool, and that's it. That's kind of like yeah. what they've got that point. Um, so I think as a, yeah, specifically for Valley for Valley, I think as that model grows and you get more people obviously participating in the space and that, I think in a few years, you will, I think we will start seeing the trend where a lot of our episodes will start getting boostergrams or messages from, you know, different episodes that we've done maybe a year or two years ago. And I think that's like good, 
but a part of me does think as well that the boostergram model per se might be a little bit more it, suited to the on-demand it, it, yeah because it's like the it direct is. connection it to yeah you know, if you send a boostergram to someone who did a podcast two years ago but then like not even anymore doing it it's kind of like well kind of just gets lost into the ether like there's like no, almost no point to it so there's there's, there's uh there is definitely that aspect of the consistency that comes with the latest effort and you see the 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 results of the, the valley come through for, for sure for sure I, yeah I, I think the it, it makes sense for the latest ones and yes leaving stuff for, for old things is is wonderful mm. and super cool but i imagine that would get confusing if you've got 30 or 50 to read out per episode that and and then it's kind of like mixing and matching with old things yeah. and I, I noticed this myself so when i was catching up on podcasting 2.0 mm. uh there was this one instance where you know i it was for me it was like in the moment mm. and and it was where uh, they were talking about like making a joke and they were like, oh, diaper node, that's a funny URL name. Mm. And I know a Adam has a habit of just buying random URLs and linking them to his own stuff. Yeah. And so, yeah, sure enough, I type in <laughs> yeah. diaper node and it redirected back to the podcast index. Yeah. And I thought that was the funniest shit out. I, that, I, like that's the kind of small touches that just make me love a person. Yeah. And so I sent in a thing saying like, I can't believe you've registered diaper node. How, that's, that's fucking awesome. Yeah. And it's totally relevant for me, but you know, they're already 20 episodes past that or something when I sent that in. Mm. And so I remember their reaction was like, um, okay, like, I don't know what that is, but nice. Like they, it was just so far back. They, did, they didn't yeah. even remember. It was yeah, a, yeah, yeah, that's a thing. A yeah. one-off thing from half a year ago yeah. that you said, you know. <laughs> um, and this is where having more functionality related to, oh, it was boosted in this episode around this time. Um, that's what, dude, I'm waiting for something like that. That'll be really, Yeah, I'll, really I'll, I'll show you what Saturn is, um, looks mm. like um, uh, in a while. Yeah. Um, that's the one that's the, also you can see the streaming coming through you in can the see, episode and stuff like that. You can see that. the yeah. streaming, saw, but it's got the audio at the bottom. So yeah. you can see. I think I've seen uh, Adam post that on Twitter as well. In yeah. A few places. So I don't like, I mean, it looks schmick. Like it looks yeah. really, yeah, really it does. good. Yeah, it does look schmick. Yeah, that's the, um, the Get Albi guys. They're doing some cool yeah. stuff. So yeah, that was that, that was that one, and then um, also if like little handy hint here for people, <laughs> if you want to get people's attention, sending them money is a good way of doing it. <laughs> and so I, I included true. a split for it ended up being twenty three, twenty four people, I guess, mm. um, with some of them kind of being like doubles in a way, um, but it was for every basically for every episode of the well, shows sorry. that I did you know if there was multiple people in it they will, then i'd kind of create two splits for that so yep. even i think there was only 18 episodes there was there was a lot more, more splits. people yep. um and yeah there was something really satisfying about once i'd all created it mm. i sent a ten thousand to it and so you know a thousand went to us because we had a 10 percent of that and then the rest, and then the rest were mostly like five percent to, yep. to everyone else and funnily enough, every single split went through, which was crazy. Wow, <laughs> uh, that's cause good. That's yeah, I, I wasn't expecting that. I thought there'd be a couple, couple would, like, failed payments. Jink about, yeah. And yeah, it's it's already you gain traction by just appearing mm. on people's consciousness like that, yeah. like a like a big boom. Here's yep. here's some money, and if you do it by including splits for everyone, mm. um, in the future. If anyone ever boostergrams that episode, which I hope they will do, because it's kind of the latest of season two, mm. so it's going to be right at the top. Then it'll, everyone for, else will also get that split. That's yeah, and so that that would be really cool in like you know a month's time if someone finds out about Value for Value show boostergrams the latest. Mm. Then I'm just like, uh, it's you know it's kind of selfish in a way because it's like here's a forced fucking message right in your face. Yeah, uh, yeah from, but, from me, <laughs> from us being like and, here you and, go, and requires no effort on my part. Um, and you get a little bit of money. Like you know, that's, it, it's, that's pretty it's cool. It's sort of like the the it's 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 the best marketing that I can think yeah, of, honestly, because it's it's like you know we're we're directly giving you value for the support you gave us. There's no effort from us on our, our part at all. It's purely just someone like listening to the podcast. Like, yep, if, fantastic. If I was a bit more of a, um, I suppose like an asshole slash less <laughs> ethically inclined, I would be having so much fun doing random shit like this, boosting myself to get my own boost, kind of. Yeah put up on the charts and you know all, all that sort of shit which yeah. people do with their podcast now well, you get find out like, anyway no, you, you get find out yeah that's, exactly that's thing. exactly like, you, know, you can do yeah. that like for sure you can do that but it's in the it's in the even if people don't like you can't get called out for it right like you know mm. it's like you know 
People know. It, yeah. It's one of those yeah. like you, you, you can start tell. to get a bit suspicious. Like it's, it's the same thing with you. I've know, never seen this person before. They they went. They came once and never came again. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a similar things with you know back in the day with Instagram people or Facebook people or anyone being like, oh, you got four hundred thousand followers, but you've only get like a hundred likes on each comment. You know, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Where you're like, okay, there's this telltale sign. So not you can be like this. I can prove it a hundred percent, but it's the you can tell from a, a little the, whispering. Yeah, they're like, around. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that you don't want to deal with. Yeah, the last thing I wanted to bring up was just related to the actual podcasting 2.0 and all. All mm. the there's there's a lot of benefits and man, there's some really cool shit that's you know it's changed our podcast a lot. Mm-hmm. But um, there's a word of warning for people: it is new and you can <laughs> get caught up in some kind of janky shit which you're not going to enjoy if you're not prepared for it. So. Mm. The reason, so um, yeah, and using Castapod, uh, self, uh, like open sourced self hosting platform, yep, um, to, to host your podcast. As I'm, I've been using it, I've been realizing more like, man, this is it. It kind of feels like a little bit of polish because it does have you know some like a nice little user mm. interface and things like this, but. The amount of times when I really start, you know, trying to add my own tags into the RSS, yeah. when I try and do something, you know, a little bit particular, mm-hmm. um, I try to import the the book reviews podcast, and it, it it just wouldn't let it because it was like a type file, you know, I hadn't set all. When we'd transferred from Wooshka to Buzzsprout, that messed up some things, and yep. those small things that got messed up, trying to get into this new system, uh, just didn't didn't enjoy working. it at yeah. all. So the amount of just error pages I've been getting whilst in experimenting this last week. Quite large. Quite a lot. <laughs> quite a lot. And you can get bitten, man. So I I know I can get back into the old server. Mm-hmm. I have I have access to the like my PHP admin. But all the steps, all the people who are helping me, you know, mm. look for this, change this. I I tried multiple different ways, like through the command line, through the PHP admin. Yep. I, I could not for the life of me get this old password and thing back and that was where I just went fuck it I'm just going to create a whole new thing um, and, yeah, and okay. manually upload 38 episodes which took forever <laughs> yes you better better Damn. appreciate that everyone and <clears throat> now the funny thing was why well oh but it's a it's an RSS podcast um, you you can import podcasts from other places mm. that's how you do it you, you just import the RSS feed all the audio files yep. get um, copied from whatever database it is. So from Buzzsprout, mm-hmm. it'd be onto my own servers and whatnot. But because I'm a, I'm a, you know, such an experimenter, <laughs> I I put the lock tag on, and the lock tag basically says oh. it's a little thing in the RSS mm-hmm. which says, um, this this is locked. This yep. podcast is so locked. You cannot do that. So. Um, it's it's kind of like an honor system. Mm. If if you honor the lock tag, cut like Castapod does and uses all the new tags, mm-hmm. they see oh this podcast is locked. I'm not going to import it. Yeah, because <laughs> I had now been blocked out of my logging yeah, into it. I couldn't that. I couldn't untick that one fucking box, Bam. which subsequently resulted in many an hour of of uploading. Of uploading. So. Um, I've, I still actually need I, to to make sure I untick those from the mere mortals <laughs> and book one. reviews because it is just not worth it at our level. Yeah. To to have that on, uh, you know. Could you un- imagine re-uploading the, the problem? One hundred book book reviews. Two hundred. Two hundred book reviews. Um, well, damn. Funny you say that because um, yeah, there's some there's some things I'm not I'm not confident I can get those onto Castpod. Yeah. And so. I think I might have to go to the stage where I am manually writing out the RSS. It, it's either continue continue using Buzzsprout or I'm manually, which I think actually wow. would kind of work for me because uh-huh. I'm at the stage where I can, I understand what all the tags are mm-hmm. and I un- understand how you, you do them. Yep. But yeah, a lot of stuff could go wrong with that. <laughs> yeah. I'm going from the thing I'm bitching about being hard <laughs> to something even even, even, harder. even harder. But I mean, there's a... There's a 15 gig limit that um, that Castapod has, has okay. in terms of of actual hosting storage. Uh, um, right, okay. I don't know why that is because I'm hosting my own servers, but yeah, money I, man. Well, yeah, I I I I just straight up don't know 
the mechanics behind that. I should probably ask in the um. Well, my thought. I wonder what servers they're using. Like, you know, are they using a, a provider service behind the layer? You know, are they using an Amazon service? Are they using yeah, Microsoft know. service? Are they like I, I they've got to be using so a much. server somewhere, like some parent server? And so it's just the cost involved. The reason why Gmail, you know, uh, G Drive has 15 gigabytes. It's the same thing. So it's probably a cost basis in, in that as well. Yeah, but but I mean, like, Castapod, it's just a it's it's just a software package. Mm. So I'm just uploading all of that onto the the cloud ocean. Or yep, di- yep. Sorry, cloud ocean. It's digital ocean, and yep. then I'm using a thing called cloud panel, and I'm I'm not exactly sure what the differences yeah. <laughs> between those things but like we're um, not going to pretend we're not going to pretend no to, no to the, more, more learning on my part required yeah, absolutely um the small things though you know the cover art a lot of times it's not exactly especially for your mm. ones because you're less pedantic than me they're not exactly square pixel wise you mm. might have something that is 4000 by 3998 Castapod did not like that oh really so i i had to ma- manually adjust small things just to be like Get in, you you fucking pixel. Damn, uh, that's that's wild. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. there's there's all these little things for like that. The the last one as well was just on the RAM issues. So um, we talked about all mm. that last week in episode three thirty three. But the the main problems that you thought I'd be having, funnily enough, aren't happening. Aren't happening. If no anything, the export of videos is better. I think because I've adjusted a couple of things, yeah. uh, everything's more up to date, and I've, you know, had because I've had to, I've had to rejig some stuff, and I'm mm. like, all right, I'm going to export these files in 1500 by 1500 instead of 4500 by 4500 gotcha. pixels, and I was noticing those were what was slowing it down right. previously. So the exporting has been fine. Mm. Photoshop though. Photoshop's become very difficult, um, uh, almost to the point of unusable. unusable. So, I th- I'm hoping I can just go back to like older versions of it, and that might fix it. Yeah, okay. um, that's a bit of a pain. But yeah, like thankfully I don't use Photoshop that much. Mm. Uh, but yeah, that that one's a that one's a bit of a What's bummer. A bit of a doozy. At the Damn. And of course, just before we came over <laughs> here, and why we're here and not in South Bank was because the computer decided my to... computer crash just before we came out and man, worrying, yeah. worrying to well, say look, the look, least. Look, let's let's wrap it up here just in case. If this laptop shuts down at this point, I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna fling, I'm gonna break it. In half, uh, so yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I'd, um, I'd be tempted. I'd, I'd be, be tempted, tempted to be like, fuck it, I'm yeah. it in the bin. Yep, goodbye. You go to the basketball court <laughs> to start playing, like yeah, shooting, start, hoops, start shooting hoops. But look, look, what, what you've been hearing of us talk through today for me and um probably take away the fact that there's a lot of effort you know there's a lot of effort that goes behind creating a valley for valley podcast you know there, there is a layer of there's podcast creation and creation of content and when it comes to videos and a lot of other things yes it takes effort but there's a certain extra level of effort that has to be done to create it so that it is valley for value enabled so that you can get this value in podcasts that are a little bit more decentralized in a way that you can support us with bootstagram so you know we don't and we've, we had this conversation myself and Karen a long time ago of, you know, do we, do we want to say to people, you can support us with Patreon or you can send us this or whatever. And we kind of like landed on like, no. The yeah. model is Bootstagram, stream through with Satoshis as you're listening to and decentralized. That's the way we want you to to help us, uh, the you know, the Valley for Valley model. And again, there's time, talent, or treasure. Um, so of course, that's uh, the treasure aspect of it. But of course, if, you, if you're hearing us out and go, oh, again, maybe you're thinking of doing this and maybe you could do this in a better way, um, awesome that would be fantastic if you can help us out create something you know if i start talking about from a fitness perspective that i want to do a challenge and you want to be like oh i have a friend who did a similar thing here's a schedule of yeah, how we train out, check out this one that's in Uruguay. yeah exactly awesome that'd be fantastic so there's a lot of that that also gives us value in return um so of course we, we produce the podcast for you and unlike your typical advertising model where you have to sort of pay without even knowing what the what value you're getting you've just listened to a, a wonderful podcast and maybe you've just gone the through only, the only thing you're paying is maybe your eardrums because I'm I'm bitching a, a lot yeah, about yeah, the, yeah, exactly, the laptop a lot of RAM and stuff like that but it just it gives you a little bit of an insight into the difficulties that sometimes comes with creating things like this as well so yeah 100% um, and, and look like if you want really our thoughts on it check out the latest musings so that mm. was episode 332 yeah, 332 or where we spent a lot of time talking about exactly why we don't correct want to do advertising the sort of self censorious nature of of, of um, the, the the lack of transparency I, th- I guess that comes mm. with a lot of those um, 
which which we don't find. We want to be able to speak our mind yeah. as 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 freely as possible. There's always mm. going to be some sort of you know people perhaps manipulation by people um, of of you know talking about things or you know just inadvertently I, I could be a puppet on a string but mm. I, I, it's never going to be a conscious thing on my part where i'm like yeah. oh i can't say that oh i don't you know. exactly exactly so that no, was good um all right me more lights i hope you have enjoyed all the best for wherever you are in the world that's it one out karen out ooh, ooh, yeah. ooh.